In this video, I'll be looking at the tropics to see if there's any hurricane or tropical storm development, and is hurricane season starting to wind down as we head into October. Also look at your 6 to 10 day temperature and precipitation outlook, as well as if there is any snowstorms on the way later this week and the next, and will it bring a severe weather threat as well? I'll look at that in your near and long term forecast coming up in this video. Welcome back to Williams Weather. Looking at the tropics here, we do have a medium chance for tropical storm development in the eastern Pacific. It's a 50% chance in the next five days. This does develop, it looks like it could head north and possibly into southern California and the southern Arizona, or it could possibly churn east or head west. But we will look at that in the upcoming models on the simulated radar. There's also a typhoon over here in Eastern Asia called Nisat. Wind speeds of 105 mile an hour, max gusts of 125, and it looks like it's going to make landfall by the 20th at 8 a.m. Max gusts of 45 mile an hour, wind speeds of 35. Like I said, we will look at the simulated radar and your long-term forecast. See where this tropical storm development chance will go. If it will slam into Mexico or it will hit America or will it just go out into the Pacific and not affect anybody. Other than that, there's really not much out there as far as tropical storms go. Now let's look at your 6 to 10 day temperature and precipitation outlook before we look at the near and long term forecast now put your guesses below before moving forward what do you think it'll be will it be warm for your part of the country or will it be cool or what are you hoping for looks like we're heading for a major heat wave here for the eastern part of the country from the central to eastern part and northeast got a drastic cool off out west here in the blue the next six to ten days the next eight to fourteen days about the same really as far as precipitation goes looks like it will be very very wet running from indiana all the way to california here in the green dark rains gonna be getting a lot of rain and then we're here in the orange and the brown it's gonna be drier than average let's look at the 8 14 day it's like much of the country here in the green it's gonna be above average as far as precip goes let's look at your excessive rainfall outlook now today looks like there's a marginal risk down here in southwest texas through day two only nothing much day three the same now let's look at the winter storm severity index this is new for winter weather looks like uh the next three days there is a good chance up here in the peninsula of michigan the UP, as they call it. Let's sure that for the next three days. It's like today, Monday, there is a marginal risk for northeastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia, eastern Florida, and southern Texas. Basically, it's going to be a low-end hail and wind threat. The next couple days after that, really not much. Just this general thunderstorm risk in southern Florida. Nothing for the next four to eight days as we head into the second season of severe weather. Now, why do we call it the second season of severe weather? Because of Mayfield. Remember Mayfield? The Mayfield tornado that happened December 10th? Severe weather can happen in the in the winter time. It's not as common, but it can happen. So please be on high alert in the winter time. Anytime you say that there's a thunderstorm watch issue of trying to watch, just stay on high alert. Keep the batteries in the weather radio, keep them charged up. Please have a way to get a warning of events like the Mayfield tornado that could save your life. Now let's look at your near and long-term forecast. Let's look at the weather alerts first and see there is a freeze warning issued in the purple here till tuesday and there are some winter storm warnings up here in the upper peninsula and northern wisconsin the upper peninsula of michigan as well freeze watch all the way down to mississippi and alabama and the north carolina in the blue here let's go ahead and take a look at your near-term forecast let's look at the jet stream real quick it looks like we are in a trough right now in the in the midwest and the Ohio valley this is going to bring some really really cold temperatures tonight into tuesday morning and then six to ten days said it's going to be warming up within the next six to ten days so will this be true on tuesday afternoon trough is really all the way down into tennessee so that's gonna be bring really really cold temperatures down canada we're still in that trough pattern all the way through the end of the week it looks like it's going to warm up as a bridging event will happen by the weekend a zonal flow will occur up there in canada will be nice and toasty down here push us forward into next week it's like another trough will form out in the west it's gonna be kind of a weak trough so there was early signs that there was gonna be some severe weather down here in texas southern plains it looks like that trough sort of weakened down a little bit and there still could be some severe weather and i will keep you all updated on williams weather if that verifies as it does go from positive tilt to sort of a weak negative tilt the winds will be pretty gusty out here in the ohio valley and illinois and Missouri area as we head into next week. Now this is far out into the future. Anything could still change. As of right now, it's still saying it's gonna be pretty windy by next week. As another trough comes down by the 26th. Now we go from warm to cool again. Another ridge over there in the plains and another trough in the west as we head towards the end of October into early November. And this is looking pretty interesting over here in California. And we'll look at the temperatures 
first. Before we look at the simulated radar, as I'll show you what we're looking at as far as temperatures go. We're looking at Tuesday by 8 a.m. It's going to be in the 40s, in the low 20s, up in Minnesota, in the Dakotas. You see that trough is set up right here where my arrow's at. Follow the arrow. Coming to the 50s out west. It's going to be nice in the southwest in the 70s. Florida's going to be nice by tomorrow morning. In the afternoon, it's going to be in the mid-60s out west. And looks like we're not going to warm up very much in the plains in the Ohio Valley, the northeast is going to be in the 50s and 60s. Let's just forward into 8 o'clock. It's like mid-40s. Still in the upper 60s out west. Almost in the 90s in Southern California. Around 8 o'clock on Wednesday. Cold again in the Midwest and Ohio Valley and Deep South. That cold's going to span all the way down there. Into the Deep South. It's going to be 40 degrees in Southern Alabama. Burr. That's cold for y'all. You're not used to those kind of temperatures. In the northeast, it's going to be in the 30s. 20s up in Minnesota and the Dakotas. It's going to be in the 40s and 50s and 60s out west. Of course, southwest, it's going to be pretty warm as well. Let's just forward into Wednesday afternoon. It's going to start warming up in the Ohio Valley, 50s and 60s in Alabama and 60s in Dixie Alley down here. Let's just forward again. You see it's going to be warm and cold. It's going to be 72 on around 8 p.m. on Friday. You see it's going to start warming up by the weekend. It's going to be in the upper 70s and it's going to start cooling off again by next week. By next Thursday, it's going to be back to cold again for the Ohio Valley in the Midwest. As we're heading towards the trough and the ridge pattern, as we all know and love in, in the fall time. The warm and the cold fight could bring some severe weather in the future. And we'll go ahead and look at simulated radar real quick, see if any severe weather will occur. Let's we'll just forward here. We do have some snow showers in, the, in Indiana here by Tuesday morning. Don't be surprised if you have a dusting. We'll look at the snow totals here in a little bit, and we'll look at all the models as well. I'm going to test this out, so bear with me, and we'll look in the future here. Northeast coming getting some rain. It's like 8 a.m. on Tuesday. Still some heavy snow in the upper peninsula of Michigan, up into Canada. Rain out in the northeast as well. Still, just off in the future again. Snow showers and rain showers in Michigan. Getting some snow. Western Pennsylvania into New York on Wednesday morning. There could be some school closures and business closures. There's some slick roads forward. Looks like it's going to be pretty dry for much of the country Thursday morning. As much of the country will warm up by the weekend. We got some high pressure for much of the country. Fun in the sun. Enjoy your day Friday. Forward again. Looks like we have a disturbance again in the northwest. Bringing some snow to Idaho and Montana. The mountain states over out west. And we push it forward again. More snow. Snow in Colorado. It's like a possible snowstorm in Colorado. Also whiteout conditions. It's going to be good for the snow slopes out there. If you're a ski lover. You like to go skiing. If you get any snow, please post below in the comments how much you got. I'd like to know. Put it on my Facebook page. It's Williams Weather. On Twitter, it's called um, at McCall's Weather. I like to, to see how much snow y'all got. Now it looks like by the 24th there is a major snowstorm up in Canada. This is very, very interesting and I've been looking at this for a while. Now this could change. This could go further south. But if this holds steady, stays where it's at, this could uh, bring some severe weather to much of the plains in the Ohio Valley in the Midwest. Push us forward here. Looks like we have a little weak squall line. Some thunderstorms by the 25th on Tuesday. Now this is still far out in advance. Sorry. Far out in the future, anything could change. And I will update y'all if anything changes. We could have a blizzard up there in Canada, but if that goes further south, that could create some major problems. The squall line moves through the Ohio Valley and deep south by morning of 26, and weekends and heads east and out of the country by the 27th. And some snow out west in the mountain states. Northwest gonna get some more rain by the 31st, 8 a.m. More snow. Let's look real quick. 8 a.m. 8 o'clock on the 31st on Halloween. That's going to be a sneak peek of what the Halloween forecast could possibly look like. Like the Ohio Valley, y'all are going to be in a, in a ridge of high pressure. Y'all are going to be good for trick-or-treating. It looks like out west, it's going to be a snowy trick-or-treat for y'all. It's going to suck. I remember I went out trick-or-treating in the snow one time, trekking through it. That's what kind of fun, though. I created good memories. Push us forward here. Now we're in the beginning of... November, there's some snow in the mountains, some snow up there in Maine, and it looks like that hurricane, a potential tropical storm, will form down here and hit Mexico by the 24th. It will make landfall with a 998 millibar low, but we will look at that, look at the sea surface temperatures here in a little bit, and look in the Atlantic Basin. Let's look at the snowfall totals, the snow depth. Now, this is according to the GFS. We will look at different models, and we'll look at the National Service blended models as well. Now, I'll push this to the future here by Tuesday morning. It's like you could see upwards of 10 inches up in the upper peninsula of Michigan, this little island here. So I'm saying about three to six. That's according to the GFS. And a dusting down here in Indiana by eight o'clock in the morning. So don't be surprised if you have a dusting of snow on your sidewalk in the morning. If you live in central to eastern Indiana and possibly in the, out here in Louisville too. Let's just forward. Oh, there is some dusting of snow up here in Pennsylvania. 
West Virginia. Which is forward here. Looks like next week. We're getting some snow out here in the mountain states. Good for the ski slopes. Six to seven inches in the Idaho. Three, three over here in Utah. Which is forward again. Now this major snowstorm I was talking about. It's going to bring about, I'd say, four to eight. I'd say on the low end, two inches, possibly. This is according to the GFS, by the way. Which is forward again, 26. It's like every snowstorm that happens next week, bring about two to four inches of additional snowfall with it. But this is according to the GFS. There is other models as well. well let's just go to the National Weather Service and blend the models just to sum it up real quick. Now, this is the conservative model. So let's take this with a grain of salt. About one to two inches is what I was saying in northern Indiana. Wow, I could create some slick roads for y'all out there. Well. 10 inches, 5 to 10 inches up there in northern Wisconsin into Michigan, the little island of Michigan there. About a dusting or so in western Pennsylvania, parts of Ohio, West Virginia. Which is forward here, western states by Tuesday afternoon. Now this only goes out to Thursday. About 2 to 3 inches of additional snowfall and 10 inches up there in the mountains. So it'll be good for uh, those uh, ski slopes as well. All right, lastly, we're going to look see where the hurricanes will go. Centers here a minute. See if there's anything else that's going to develop out here in the main development region just west of Africa. See the sea surface temperatures here are not really sustainable for tropical storm development as of today anyway. And at least the even the northern gulf sea surface temperatures are pretty starting to cool down. Down here where my air is at, these are the sea surface temperatures. Color code here, that's in Celsius. It was all the way up to 30, 32 degrees. 32 degrees is about 89 degrees in Fahrenheit. Now push us in the future. You see the gulf there is starting to cool down. But if anything develops, out here, it starts churning west, it will fuel off that warm water as long as there's no wind shear. Wind shear, cool waters, they pretty much destroy hurricanes. Any troubles on development out there and dry air too. It was forward, not much uh, sustainability for our hurricane development. We'll go ahead and look at maps here. Simulated radar starting off today. We do have some spinneroonies out there and clusters, but they die off before they turn into anything. All the way out into Saturday, showers down there in Central America. Look like much is gonna happen really in the near future. Of course, you got that squall line right there I was showing y'all earlier, and that big snowstorm up in Canada. Now, if that holds together, that could really be something. But I will let you know, y'all know in the next video that not much happening out there as hurricane season is wiping down. And we'll go ahead and look at that typhoon as well. Did you see typhoon Nisat out there just spinning around? This is the uh, model. It's really the only one thing I could find on it, really. This is on Radar Omega on Monday, 11 o'clock in the morning. Push this forward here to 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock. It's going to be hitting High Cow over here in Asia as it weakens down by the 20th. It makes landfall by the 20th. So if you're in Eastern Asia or travel to Eastern Asia, just be aware that this typhoon is out there going to be wreaking havoc on Asia. That'll about do it for this video. As you notice, Mr. Uh, Boat is on back here. What happened to him is uh, the mystery. I'll find out in the next video what happened to Mr. Boner. We do have a little sidekick over here, a little minion right here. She's over here just sleeping along while I'm doing this video. So if you like the video, please consider giving a like, comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Never stop forecasting.